Why learn software engineering? Many often, my students ask me before we start learning software engineering, why do we need to learn software engineering? Especially if I'm doing a good job creating and selling software. My quick reply is, would you use the same approach to building an apartment building as you would be building a doghouse? Of course not. With the apartment building, you would need a new, better, reliable approach. Even when building a small-sized house dog, wouldn't learning new techniques, best practices, and new tools be more effective and efficient? You will learn from the people who have solved similar problems like yours instead of reinventing the wheel. Also, being more productive means you would have more time to build more software, and more software means more profits for you and your organization. Also, compare software with movies. You can shoot a small movie with your smartphone and share it with your friends and family, but you can't expect that homemade movies to be displayed in cinemas and win an Oscar. But suppose you want to shoot a real commercial movie. In that case, you would need the help of many people with various roles and specialties who should cooperate to create the movie. A lot of planning and coordination and communication between those professionals should be considered as well. The same thing can be said about software. If you want to build high-quality software, then you should expect many people to be involved with various roles and specialties, and they should cooperate to create the software. Saying that, if you haven't heard about the software crisis, let me tell you about it. Software crisis is a term that talks about the many difficulties in developing large software systems during the 60s and 70s. Software project failures occur more frequently than they should. The term software crisis dates from that time, and I believe it is still valid today. Symptoms of the software crisis are Never completed systems Missed deadlines Exceeded budgets A system that does not do all that is required of it A system that works, but is difficult to use a system is difficult to modify to meet changes in organizational needs and practices. A loss of trust from users who may experience many problems with using the software. There is many examples of the software crisis, and I bet you have many examples of your own. Let me tell you a few recent stories about software project failures. Ariane 5 the first launch of the European Space Agency, Ariane 5 rocket in June 1996, failed after 37 and a half seconds causes the loss of $350 million. After investigation, the problem came down to a single step in the software that causes the software to crash, hardware to crash, and the whole rocket to crash. Boeing plane crash. You might say that 1996 was a long time ago, but we all have heard of Boeing plane crashes. That was an Ethiopian plane crash in 2019. To avoid future crashes, Boeing will roll out a software upgrade for its grounded 737 MAX aircraft in the coming weeks, following the Ethiopian Airlines crash that killed 157 people. The U.S. plane maker expects the U.S. Federal Aviation Administration to approve design changes to the software no later than April 2019. Heathrow Airport Disruption In February of 2020, more than 100 flights in and out of London's Heathrow Airport were cancelled, delayed, or otherwise disrupted after technical issues compromised the departure boards and check-in systems. As a result, passengers were left without the critical information they needed about their flights. Other examples of software projects failures are A project of $40 million in 1997 was cancelled by the state of Washington that had planned for the Department of Motor Vehicles. In the same year, International Revenue, USA, cancelled its project for the tax modernization effort. An amount of $4 billion was estimated for the implementation of this project and many, many more. Many project failures resulted from the inability to scale the techniques employed when developing small software systems to handle larger, more complex systems. These problems were mostly due to the lack of any framework for planning and organization software development projects. Current challenges in software engineering research and development include 
the need to develop trustworthy high-quality software, the higher demand of quick turnaround from concept to deployment and operation, dealing with the increased complexity of software required in new applications, the diversity of software systems that need to communicate or operate with each other. We create software on the web, smartphones, embedded systems, and desktop computers, and more. The need for increased efficiency in component-based reuse and automatic code generation. The way I see software engineering shines more is when we handle changes. Change is inevitable, no matter what. Something will change in your software. Changes like customer demands, market needs, and new technologies. Software engineering practices help ease the application of such changes to the software. One last point that I consider an important reason to consider when learning software engineering is the whole team approach concept. Agile is considered the future of developing and managing software projects. One of the major concepts in Agile is the whole team approach. A whole team approach emphasizes the notion of generalizing specialists as opposed to role specialists. In Agile, people who can act in more than one role are highly preferred. Generalizing specialists with cross-functional skills can perform many different tasks on projects. Any team member might complete any task. Anyone can almost do anything. A developer can help in testing the software. A tester can be the analyst with the requirements. The whole team can work together to come up with the best design for the software. The whole team is self-managing, so everyone should have management skills. Then the whole team approach should involve constant collaboration. There is no, this is not my job, nor, this is your sole responsibility. Oh, I hate those words. The whole team approach's real goal is to ensure that the team works collectively to assign, deliver, test and review work products and identify risks. The team commits to provide the highest possible business value as a team. When considering the whole team approach, you expect every team member to be an expert in one of the software project's roles and understand the remaining roles. You expect everyone to understand the language of the other team members. That's why I consider this course series a great introduction to learning more about all the aspects of software engineering. So. Why learn software engineering? Software engineering is a structured approach for building large or complex systems, a method for decomposing the problem into manageable portions, a shared understanding of the task and proper communication. Building large systems involve extensive group work. Each member of the group needs to understand their task and how it interfaces with other tasks. Groups and individuals need to communicate in a commonly agreed language.